but 98 really started. 99 I brought Packer in. 2000 I bought in Deutsche Bank. 2001 I bought in AB Namro. At the end of that, 2001, we owned 25% each. And in 2004, we sold to General Electric and someone said the price. We went from a business of zero, grey room, grey walls, grey desk, grey de uh, carpet, grey suits, to 300, nearly 300 branches in Australia and New Zealand, 55 branches in India, turnover $100 million, $100 million per annum in wages, $20 million, $20 million in uh, 2003 profit, $80 million year profit in, year, uh, in 2004 when we sold it, zero assets to $19 billion worth of assets in just over five years. Not, nothing to do with my genius. It was, because I don't have a genius, it was nothing to do with me. It was, there was a market, which I had some expertise in. There was an opportunity. I met some blokes who could actually solve the problem. I knew what the problem was because I experienced the problem myself. I met up with someone who was a great person in terms of keeping me accountable. I met up with a great person who, in terms of giving me capital. I met up with a great person who actually told me what my business purpose was, as opposed to me being, you know, thinking I'm a home lender to telling me what my business purpose was. And someone who made sure that, well, I felt comfortable with that if I failed, that he would find it was not unacceptable. And they're the basic elements, what everybody keeps asking me when they come to the, you know, at mybrothers.com.au or when they send me an email or when they see me in the street or whatever. They're the same questions that people ask me today as, as I experienced back then in the wizard days. It's, it's a tough road. It's a tough road being an entrepreneur. It's a tough road being a startup. But what I will say to you is this, if you understand the fundamentals, apart from what business you want to be in, but you understand those fundamentals that I just expressed to you, and you accept that right now, this is an inflection point in this country. The big complaint has been, we can only do business here in San Francisco. My view is that Sydney, for example, has better entrepreneurs than any other country in the world. Better ability. Yet we underplay ourselves. Our Prime Minister and this government, and I'm not here to give them a plug by any means, but this government acknowledges that. Not because they're benevolent, not because they just take a view on innovation, but because they know unless they turbocharge innovation in this country, we're going to have a higher unemployment rate than we've ever had before because we can't rely on the construction industry, which is, we've lived off the back of for, for nearly a century, and we can't rely on the mining boom. So we have to rely on something or something is more sustainable, and that is the 2.4 million small business people in this country, all of which are good at innovation. You are part of a community that employs 60% of every person in this country, and the government knows that. And there is an imperative for them to look after you, and they know that the, imperatives, the imperative requires capital to be supplied, crowdsourcing, they, they know that there's all sorts of packages that should be available to you to offset against your income, your other income, income tax packages. I suspect you're going to start seeing that stuff come through. So start gearing your businesses up and get ready, ready to take advantage of the new landscape. Thanks very much. Good luck.